this mysterious teaching of the mystical reality of life, which is not meant to be just a belief or a doctrine or a dogma, uh, but is in fact meant to be an understanding of life that reveals its deeper mechanics, the structure of our existence, the way that everything works, as it were, at its deepest level. There is this extraordinary place, the domain, the abode of perfection and of wholeness, of fulfillment. It is paradoxical in its character. It is extraordinary beyond what appears or shows itself at the surface of life. And yet it is utterly real. It is that which is most real. Every planetary tradition of wisdom in its own language, from its own perspective and vantage point, through its own specificities of different traditions and teachers and teachings, fundamentally, ultimately speaks about this. It's named in innumerable names and described in every possible way. And for us, we have this understanding that says, our purpose is not merely to study different, different traditions of philosophical wisdom. We wish to live that reality. We deeply aspire, our heart moved, are ignited and impelled to attain, or to see deeply into, to steep in, to be encompassed and surrounded and infused and utterly completely embraced by the reality of life at its deepest level, such that what we're living at the surface of life in our physical body, in our mind, in our personality, in the experiences that are available to us through our senses is itself uplifted, enhanced, enriched, transformed, illuminated, and powerfully powerfully energized and accelerated by the living connection of our individuality with the vast oceanic totality of life, the Akanda Mandala, the unbroken sphere of wholeness, unfragmented, undivided, completely unified, the, that sphere and domain of life that in fact holds everything together. What we experience at the surface of life is being held, as it were, in this mysterious and apparently invisible, in the ordinary sense of the word, domain of it, ultimate existence. And yet, it is there. It is not something that we are inventing or fantasizing about or merely seeking some kind of emotional or religious consolation or vision or information about perhaps some post-mortem condition that we might travel to at the end of this physical incarnation. The mystical traditions of India and certainly at their summit, the Shaiva Tantric traditions, articulate this perspective of Jiva Mukti in this very life, in this very body, the purpose, the purusharta, the ultimate purpose of human incarnation. Life has many purposes, many legitimate directions in which it unfolds and aspires to see itself grow. But ultimately, there is this extraordinariness and perfection. And there is an instinct, as it were, deep, deeply present, alive, fervently operative within the heart of everything, of all of reality, of all beings. And certainly as that, that instinct of return to the vastness, 
awakens inside a human being what the beautiful Siddha masters, Siddha gurus, call Shakti Pata, the descending of that illuminative force that transforms our perspective and our circumstance on our own existence. It opens up our understanding. It deepens our viewpoint. It illuminates the light of clarity of our mind and it deeply stirs within the living energy of consciousness, the very function and role of which is to facilitate that sequential process of transformation by means of which eventually the wave realizes its oceanic character. The individual attains the magnificence of that universality not by abandoning individuality or negating our individual embodiment, but rather by inviting into our life, into our experience, into the sphere and ambit of our awareness, of our consciousness, that influx, that descending, opening, illuminating potency of consciousness itself that transforms our perspective and really really uplifts and ennobles our experience of ourselves such that, yes, we continue to live as individuals. There is no need to relinquish our individuality and we continue to explore life in all of its different streams and levels and varieties. But at the same time, there is this deep, perhaps hidden, perhaps mystical, process that is taking place very deep inside about which the great masters have taught and which forms the essence of what is known as sadhana, that engagement, that systematic, coherent engagement with life and its fundamental energies. And so we are engaged in a seriousness of practice and a, a sustained attempt to refine and expand and, and really inform ourselves with regard to what this journey is about, seeking out extraordinary vocabulary and deep understanding and really organized systems of clarification, of, ex of explanation, of a kind of, of systematic discernment of the structure of life this wave of divine refinement, transformation, and illumination is itself the pulsation of the great heart of the absolute, of this Akanda Mandala, as the beautiful verse tells us, that unbroken sphere of wholeness that knits together all of existence, not just our individuality, and not just the circumstance of whatever is taking place, on the, shall we say, very theatrical stage of our planetary uh, existence and embodiment at the moment. What is it that knits together everything, everything in its unimaginable vastness, its eternality, its changelessness, and yet its welcoming of the journey of investigation, of inspection, of discovery, that the individual way begins to make in our awareness, in our sadhana, of its own oceanic depth deep within.